Hey friends, in this video, I'm going to explain voltage, current, and resistance in a very simple way. To make it clear, I'll use a familiar example, water. The movement of electrons in a circuit is a lot like water flowing through a pipe, and that's something we all understand. So stay with me until the end, and you'll fully learn these basic concepts. In our water example, if we want a simple loop where water keeps flowing, we need a pump to push the water through the pipe. If the pipe is clear with no buildup, the pump moves the water easily and uses very little energy. But if the pipe has blockages or buildup, the pump has to work harder, use more pressure, and waste more energy. The pressure that pushes the water forward is called voltage in electricity, is shown with the letter V, and its unit is volt, also written as V. The size of the pipe controls how much water can flow. That's like the current. Current is shown with the letter I, and its unit is ampere, written as A and buildup or blockages, that's resistance. Resistance is shown with the letter R, and its unit is ohm, written with the symbol ohm. So remember this, V for voltage, I for current, and R for resistance. In the same way, just like water needs a pipe to flow through, electrons need a path too. That path is a conductor, basically a wire. So if we turn our water example into an electrical circuit, the pump becomes the battery, which pushes the electrons around the circuit. The pipe becomes the wire, which is the path for electrons. And the blockages in the pipe represent resistance. So up to this point, we've got three main things, a battery with a certain voltage, current, and resistance. There's a connection between these three, and it's called Ohm's Law. Ohm's Law is super simple. Voltage equals resistance times current. There's also another formula that links voltage and current, the power formula. It says, power equals voltage times current. And if you want to dive deeper, check out my previous video where I explained both Ohm's Law and the power law in full detail. Now let's look at a cool example to see a practical use of the power formula. Electricity consumption in cities is huge. The more current you need, the thicker the wires have to be to carry it safely. But power plants are often far away from cities. That means the wires have to be really long. And if we try to make them thick enough to carry all that current, it quickly becomes impractical because of cost and weight. So what's the solution? Here's where the power formula comes to the rescue. If we want to transmit the same amount of power but reduce the current so the wire can be thinner, the only way is to increase the voltage. And that's the solution. At power plants, we raise the voltage as high as possible to reduce the wire thickness. This is done using step-up transformers, and sometimes the voltage needs to go up to 400,000 volts or 400 kilovolt. With this method, the huge power produced by a power plant can be transmitted through wires that are only a few centimeters thick. After the electricity reaches the city, the voltage is stepped down by step-down transformers, and the current increases so the electricity can flow through the local distribution network at the standard 110 or 220 volts to reach homes. Now let's talk about the types of current. There are two kinds, alternating current, AC. This current keeps changing direction continuously. It's the same current produced in power plants and the one you get from wall outlets at home. Direct current, DC, this current always flows in one direction. Most devices like computers, phones, and TVs run on DC, 
we usually get DC from AC using converters, since our main source is the city's AC electricity. Converting AC to DC is simple and inexpensive, and you can see how it works in this video. I hope you found this video helpful. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next videos.